Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Ramit Sethi from I Will Teach You To Be Rich's new updated revamped dream job course. Now, um, if you don't know who Ramit Sethi is, uh, I feel like maybe you're living under a rock, but maybe not. He is a uh, maybe one of the top, if not the top, uh, most recognized personal finance bloggers. And he's also well known for his... Um, Thought leadership in career development, uh, online entrepreneurship, and freelancing, and basically earning more money and growing rich. Now, um, basically, um, I bought a course from him many years ago, and this is now known as Dream Job 2012. That's when I think the course launched. And since then, um, very recently, for the last couple months, he's been kind of promoting that he's going to he's revamped the entire course. And I wanted to give you guys my first impressions. I have already taken a few of the um, I've, I've gone through a few of the videos, some ranging in length from 30 minutes, some 15 minutes, some even longer than that. So I've, I've probably um, gone through maybe uh, one and a half modules and I wanted to give you guys my first impression. Now it's it's um, I think I I'm enough to be informed. I'm going to do another video once I finish the whole thing. But I was just too excited. I had to do one on what I think of it so far. And uh, this is something I I can speak to because for the original Dream Job 2012 version, that was I, I took that whole thing and it's good that they still have the old version here in case you still want to reference it back. Um, I went through all of it twice, so I'm very familiar with that. And so I can contrast this with the new version and see if it is worth it. Um, and before I get started, you know, some people are going to say like, oh, you're giving away the whole thing in this video. That I, I think not, not even close. There's hours upon hours of content in here, tons of videos. So I, I don't think I really would even scratch the surface. So, without all that out of the way, I think the first thing I want to say is I, I want to acknowledge the biggest difference. Yes, at first glance, you can see that there's a big difference with the um, design. So, with the um, design of this one, it's, it's much more smooth and high produced. Uh, that said, the old one wasn't that bad either. Um, but I think the the other big difference with this new one is something called your 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 uh, your seasons. So there's basically three seasons that you can fall into, and they run this little quiz on you to figure out which season you fall into. Um, and I think this is a fantastic new way of categorizing yourself. So as you can see, I fell into the growth season, which means that. I'm kind of in the stage of growing and climbing the career ladder and making more money. Whereas someone who falls into maybe one of the other seasons, um, maybe they're just trying to get a job in the first place and find that first dream job. Um, or they're in a place where they're trying to pivot and reinvent themselves. So you have the reinvention season here, which um, it, it gives you a breakdown for like, um, the different types of seasons. And then there's a lifestyle season. These people care more about work-life balance, passion, and the enjoyment over the other things. Um, one thing I, I really liked about this is in the original version, there wasn't anything like this. Um, while it was still very well designed, it had a more so kind of, um, here are the videos and watch them. Um, that said, I still believe that um, this was still when I when I bought this version, it was still more well designed than you know other courses out there. I remember, um, and no disrespect to Lewis House, but um, I at one point I purchased his course on how to make monies uh, through webinars, and it was just like eight videos embedded on a very basic web page, maybe even a free web page template. And I mean, maybe he's still doing something right because he's made millions off 
of that product and he's he's a millionaire and doing much better than me economically but in terms of the design of the product i just think i got a bad taste in my mouth like really you sold this for over a thousand dollars and um yeah i was already kind of skeptical so i ended up getting a refund on that um and it, it just wasn't a good fit um but with remit and this the products here like you can tell they they he invested money in the design not just in the newest newer version but in the older version too which actually didn't look like this i think they he revamped the 2012 but it was basic like this and he had like a you know he had some type of developer come in and design it um it wasn't fantastic it didn't have much imagery but it was solid like this and um it was all essentially modules that would release one per week and then each of those modules would be one main module which would be a one hour video and then it would come with um, a few bonus videos and documents supporting documents on maybe how to structure your resume or how to uh, negotiate your salary um, and then some of those bonus videos would be anywhere from 10 to 45 minute case studies where they would bring on like a successful student or a student that is working through this as well and Ramit would coach him live and that that would be how it was done. Now in the original version and I have to give you a sense of the the base version to really give you tell you the story about how it's changed so you get a sense of the context. But here's what, like one of the case studies here we have Julie a top performer and um in the base version, frankly, it was mostly PowerPoint slides in the main video. And then he clearly filmed all the case studies and bonus videos on a single day at some type of high production studio. So it was still like more of an investment than you would see in other courses. But it was, you know, fairly concise when you really thought about it. You know, when I, when I spent the amount I did, which was over $1,000, I was you know, half thinking, should I really do this? Should I get a refund? I ended up sticking with it. But um, when you really think about it, it's, it's pretty simple. Here you can now uh, download the video, transcript, audio. Um, and just to give you a sense of what the video looked like. Okay, you are in for a huge treat tonight. I can tell you confidently that this is one of the best things I have ever put together. So, you know, he starts out white background. I think he's in some type of uh, studio in New York. It jumps between a uh, PowerPoint and then eventually it gets to them uh, talking. And, you know, she she explains her story, how she had trouble finding work and, and yada, yada, yada. It was more of a social thing. Totally. With a little bit of, hey, I'm kind of... Oh, wow. And in this one, they don't even show her and him in the video studio. Um so, you know, it, it's strict, strictly audio and PowerPoint for the most part. Um, and then the actual modules for these were um, a single video. And you might be thinking, like, why would you buy something like this when there's, you know, free information online? Well, because it's an entirely different system with case studies and success stories. And, you know, I was sick of the... At the time, I was sick of the black hole approach, as he calls it, where you would send a bunch of resumes into job boards and you would never hear anything back. And so he really markets against that approach. And then he talks about an entirely different way of going about it. And I wanted to try something new. And uh, when you see a lot of the case studies and success stories, you really see start to think maybe he has something here. And... Uh, when you see how they, they successfully negotiated their salary and got 5000 10000 20000 50000 uh, more than they would have without the program, you think, wow, that's one way you can make the money back that you made investing in this course. So there's an entire salary negotiation breakdown section, but I just want to give you a sense of the 2012 version. So here's like the video. Random acts of non-productive tasks. And as a result, it stays a nebulous idea on the back burner. It's really in the back of our heads. We say things like, yeah, I really should figure it out. We discover that there are two things that matter most, job titles and companies. 
So think about that. He's really going into the setup, which is what isn't working. Then he's transitioning into his research with his team and what he found are the most critical things. And it's basically a fairly well done, somewhat well designed PowerPoint. And at the time, the entire thing was kind of built on this green design and uh, branding scheme. And then, uh, of course, here's a kind of LinkedIn uh, approach. Obviously, LinkedIn's grown a lot and changed in its design. So you can tell why he might want to, want to have uh, revamped it. But the basic principle here is still fairly timeless. Maybe the user interface changed a bit here or there, but his his formula was still pretty cool on how you could network and find people um, and then how where to go from there. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, how is the new course look? Well, first off, I'm so glad that he revamped it because you do get lifetime access. And that is one of the kind of pitches he makes when he when you uh, when you purchase something like this. Um, but the thing is, he kind of just left it as is for many years. And I, I started to wonder if he would ever update it. And I'm glad not just because he he updated it and it, it's something new, but it really kind of got started to get my gears turning because, you know, a lot of the tactics in this um, course about networking and finding mentors and salary negotiation, those are things that I've kind of just uh, let fall into the wayside. And I knew I had to do it, but it was kind of uncomfortable. And so although I was doing it hard when I was looking for a job, it's kind of just fallen away until now. This was a great refresher and reminder. So, you know, you got this cool um, growth season thing. So I'm going to talk about uh, the new course here. I'm going to tell you the good and the bad, what I liked, what I think could be better, and I'm not going to hold back because I am not affiliated. I'm not a sponsor. I'm not uh, paid by Ramit Sethi or anything. So I can help viewers out there get a honest, uh, no holds bar, barred uh, kind of 360 look at what's good and bad about the course. Now, while I do have a lot of good things to tell you, just to be transparent, I will start with something that I think could be improved. So when I went into this course, um, wow, look at that. Look at the video quality. Um, when, I look, when I started this course, one of the things that I immediately went to were some of the areas that were recommended based on my growth season. And so that meant I started to look at uh, some of the modules on um, uh, negotiation. Uh, and uh, what I found was that a lot of the, the modules and lessons and content were, it's basically the same thing as the original course, but the, it was kind of like refreshed. So he, he clearly went to the studio again, and this time he has a different backdrop and setting, and he filmed it all again. And uh, uh, the, the thing is, a lot of it is basically the same content that I knew. Um, I still found some value in it because I needed a refresher and I needed to sharpen my knife. But in terms of like new stuff, a lot of the content, the meat of it is still the same. And, you know, on one hand, that's timeless stuff. But on the other, it's like, where's the, the new stuff? So since this is still a first look video, I haven't watched all the modules. So I'm still eager to, to go through them all and find the new nuggets. I'm sure they're there. I'm sure he's developed new strategies and techniques that he sprinkled in. But it's good to see that, I mean, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad to see that the more so timeless stuff remains the same. As well as he would say it should. Um, another thing that I feel felt could have been better is maybe a bit more personalization. And what I mean by that is with the um, job negotiation, uh, the salary negotiation videos, for example, they were very much geared towards probably what most of the course takers uh, will follow, which is this kind of course where they're getting their first job and then they've gotten that job and they have a few job offers and they're at the negotiation table and they have that leverage to make that uh, ask for a raise or a different salary. 
for someone in my shoes who may already have a job and may be looking to rise within the same organization as the growth season would would uh, recommend, um, it's not really geared towards that. So a lot, some of the the phrase phrases and situations he was throwing out, they really couldn't apply to me one to one because it was a si- different situation where that person had secured a job, he had the leverage, he had job offers, and they were asking. Whereas if you're at the same company and you're you're uh, doing the same thing, it's a different play because they know you, they know your performance in the last few years. That said, that said, you can still apply a lot of the same principles more or less to that. You just have to kind of look over the fact that, okay, that situation is not the same. And, and to, to his credit, I think there is a bonus video in there where they had a, a lady who was at the same company for six years and she was trying to grow and make more salary um, and it, it just wasn't happening at her current company. So she's started to practice negotiation and see what she could do from there. So that's kind of related. Um, now, without that out of the way, I do want to mention some of the stuff I do like about this course. So here's the module. Here's the basic interface. Once again, it's fairly simple. And that's what I like about it. You know, you have the plan at the top and then the library and then the success vault. And really, if you're taking this course for the first time, you should just go chronologically. You know, maybe just log in, start with video one, and then just go down the modules. The playbook and these other stuff, those are kind of like extras or maybe stuff if you really want to kind of uh, dive into a specific you know, category after you've taken the course. Like for example, this playbook, Negotiate Salary and Sur- uh, Surprising Perks, these videos, I don't think they were part of the, actually this one was. Um, some of these videos are kind of part of the the module and some of them seem to be kind of newer ones. So I would just start with the uh, course modules and you basically have like seven modules and in each module there'll be a, a handful of videos and you can see them kind of descend just start with the first one, discover your dream role, and then once you watch all those videos, go to the next one, and then the next one. What I found interesting is this time, he didn't restrict it so that a module would unlock every week. Um, in When I bought the 2012 version, it was restricted in that way. At the time, he said, you know, this is the best way. We found that we, we have to drip them so that you get the most out of them. And I guess for whatever reason, he's uh, chosen something different. Um, I think it was after module eight, that was it. And then module nine and the bonus Q&A and Dream Job Elite Live. Those are kind of like bonus, like surprise modules to kind of like hook you in. I think around module eight was when I was like last days of a, of the refund. And so these kind of bonus modules were kind of like, okay, that's kind of nice and kind of hooked me into not refund it. With this one, um, if you click into the first module, um, it'll basically give you the videos. So from left to right would just be how you would chronologically go through them. Now, keep in mind, I think with the 2012 version, he said that the goal is not to watch every single video and every little thing in the in the course, which I ended up doing anyways because I was really struggling and really wanted to make the most of it. But um, the goal really is to get what you want out of it. Unfortunately, the, the big issue with courses is that I think there's different echelons and, and, and groupings of course purchasers. The lowest level is, is the majority which take to buy the course and never complete it or get even close to completing it. Maybe they'll do, they'll do one or two modules and then they'll quit. It's rather unfortunate, but you know, there are those people. And then there's those who do kind of average or get m- mediocre results. And then, you know, you get those higher, smaller percentages that really knock it out of the park. And so I strive to be one of those higher percentages. I, I'm not there yet, but um, you'll see that in the kind of, um, the later modules. Let's take a look at this module on uh, 
salary and surprising perks. Um, what you'll see here is they have a few, um, you know, usually it's just him talking to the camera um, and then it'll be a little bit of B-roll or uh, graphics, but sometimes they'll have a uh, a student come into the studio with him and they will talk. So in this case, they have this... Well, let's uh, take a look at some of the product manager requirements this for the job description. One of them says, identify the biggest problems and drive new feature development from start to finish. As I'm saying this, I want you to be thinking, have I done something similar to this? Another one, run research, usability studies, data-driven experiments to inform in the range I want. That is awesome news. Yeah. The second thing is... And I, I really want you to get a sense for um, his kind of coaching style. I, I found this very informative. The long and short of it, it it's a like 30-minute video. Uh, actually, no, this one's 13 minutes. Um, the long and short of it is that uh, this woman was struggling a lot with... Um, getting a substantial raise. And she was a high performer. She was making 100K a year. And she was, I think she was struggling to jump to 150K. And so um, they worked through kind of the, the process here. And he did a lot of the Socratic method to kind of ask her questions to figure out, you know, how she could uh, ask differently and improve what she says. And her his methodology is, is um, very much based in... Uh, being reasonable as well. He's not just pulling, she, they're not pulling these numbers out of the air. Um, they do their research to figure out what's the appropriate range of salaries for that job title, where do you fit, and how to ask appropriately. So I'm gonna do a little bit more here and then we'll jump to something else that I wanna share. Sure. I, I love this That's really video. smart. The other thing you said was the budget. Six to seven years, um, but I do know that for the next move up in my career, I would love to be in a role where I'm a product manager, hopefully with data related products. Um, but I really don't know how to market my skills uh, with the past experience so that I'm well suited to be the next role, which is the data product manager. Data. So um, I really love this uh, module. It really kind of showcased the before and after. You know, she started off very unconfident. They did a little bit of role playing, and ultimately, they. Um, she she became a lot more uh, confident and knowledgeable on what she could stay to stand her ground and really show where she stood and why she deserved it. So that was really impressive. There was also another one here where um, another woman made a, a significant jump as well um, in a similar uh, kind of situation. On top of... Um, case studies with students, uh, he also has a couple uh, established hiring managers. One is a uh, well-versed marketing manager and another is an engineering consultant. And he, he asked these people these questions to really get a uh, stronger sense of what it's like for a hiring manager and to dispel a lot of rumors. So I'm going to play a little bit of the second video case study and then I really want to touch on this um, these these two uh, people he brings on because that's also very valuable. Here we go. About 107. I've reached the top of my salary range in my position. Um, so I've been there now for two years. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to make, ideally, is between 140 and 150. Where'd you come up with those numbers, 140, 150? See? I like how he says that. Where did you come up with those numbers? He's not, they're not just pulling these out of the air. Talking to a couple of mentors, um, especially mentors who are in roles that I'd like to be in. Hmm. Um, and so, you know, they pumped me up. So another part of the methodology is the effective networking and researching to understand your market value in the area you are, the geography, the industry, so that you know you aren't being underpaid and you can really make the most of your worth. Um, I'm going to jump to what I was saying before. We have a, uh, I think it was called a, this one, manager confession. And I really like this because it really kind of dispelled um, a lot of kind of assumptions that maybe someone inexperienced, even to this day, like me or 
or any young professional will have. And a lot of these things, you know, I still kind of struggle with. It's nice to come back here and just like be reminded they aren't true. For example, um, a lot of people think, oh, it's not good to ask for, you know, more. I, I'm greedy or I'm, I'm inconsiderate. Um, you have these two established hiring managers here. And what you'll see here, I'm going to play a short little clip of the beginning. I, we don't have time to go through the whole uh, 16 minutes here. They actually say that they are impressed and they respect anyone who asks for more. And usually when they don't, those people are leaving money on the table because most of these hiring managers, they kind of pull back a little and, and uh, kind of offer you a lower amount because they're expecting negotiation. But most people don't, which is unfortunately disappointing for them. Here, Here's what they have to say. Now, you have been on both sides of the table for negotiation. I'm most interested in knowing as managers and hiring managers, what is it like when a candidate negotiates with you? So first thing I wanna know, if somebody comes in and asks for more money than you've offered, what do you think? Typically, I love it. I want someone who knows their value and has value and isn't afraid to be assertive. I feel like those are typical characteristics that you'd want of someone on your team. Think about how they would behave in a negotiation in a situation with an outside vendor or you know someone that we're working with as a company. I want that person on my team. I want to see that strength up front. I like that. You mentioned one of your friends, uh, a CRO, uh, who was negotiating. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, I love this. Just the other night, I was having dinner with a friend, and uh, we were talking about her hiring process, and she was blown away by hiring a more entry-level sales position, and she had had the final say. And this woman, in that moment, after the interview, tried to hard close her. And she was so delighted and impressed by that because as a salesperson her herself who had kind of grown, like grown up through the ranks, she wanted to see that fire and that... that. Okay, you get the gist. And I played it on 1.25 speed because we need to kind of be concise here. So you get the idea. And as you can see, you got these uh, standard Wistia video player features. You got the fast speed. If you don't want to jump through it, you have the closed captioning. And I like this like nice little feature where you could actually... Um, search the video basically through the captions to find like a specific line or phrase in case you want to come back to it or you're looking for a certain certain topic or or area so that's a nice little new feature that I guess their video service provides um, let's say you know I want to jump to what the engineering consultant has to say about um, uh, negotiation so let's just say uh, Let's we talk about on the table, leaving money on the table. So there's one, there's two, three. You can kind of jump to those areas. Um, but I, I want to actually want to do a really quick clip of Louis, Louis Perk here and see what he has to say, just to cement the point. You know, so for the most part, I try to make very fair offers. So I think that might play a bit of a role. So they see the offer and like, yeah, that sounds fair, let's do it. What they don't understand is that I'm always saving a little something for the potential for negotiation. So, I, I, you know, if, if I'm offering you 60 and you ask for 90, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not saving that. I don't have that in the reservoir. But if I offer you 65 and you say, I appreciate it, I really want to work with you, I think I am exactly what you're looking for. That confidence, that open communication, that directness. Um, could you do? Could you do five grand more? Ten grand more? Uh, probably. I probably can. Wow. Um, just ten grand just for asking a single question. If you're the right person, yes. And there you go. That's one easy way to make your money back from taking this course. It sounds so simple. It sounds. Uh, it's probably harder than it looks, but still, it's doable. And um, I've used this. I'm still not that good at it. I can improve. I should do it more. In fact, I haven't done it in many years. So this is why this course has uh, really helped out. And um, on top of that, you know, just think about that. Um, it's, you know, it, it, he also walks through a lot of the mistakes that uh, students make. So you can tell he's really well versed in this and he's preemptive and kind of hitting any of your mistakes. Um, before you even make them. So one of the things he says is, first, most people are too scared to even ask. Uh, like me, like I, I sometimes feel like oh, I just should, should just be humble. Uh, it, it, it'd be greedy if I ask. 
But he explains that, you know, why shouldn't you ask for what you deserve? Why should it be a source of fear or courage rather than a source of a high performer, a, a, a trait of high performer? Then he talks about the second big mistake, which is swinging for the fences and asking for way too much beyond what's reasonable. And so he has this clear process here where it's, you know, you, a, you ask for something within your research and reasonable uh, ranges. So you're not asking for 100K when you're at a base of 60K, but you could ask for another 5K or 10K, and they could grant that with no problem, especially if you've already kind of closed the interview and they want you on board. Um, so incredible stuff here. Obviously, I haven't, I've only done like a few uh, couple minutes here and there. So you get the sense of it, but you you don't get the full thing for, you know, anyone who complains which I did have happen. I did a Jeff Nippard uh, review of his uh, ebook, and they're like, oh, "You're giving the whole thing away." No, that's that's not the case. Um, so, I think in general, this is a solid, solid course. Is it worth the massive price? I would say it depends. Uh, for some people, maybe not. That's way outside of your budget. And even for me, back in my day, it was a somewhat desperate decision. I wanted to switch things up, and I tried something else out. And uh, it may work, it may not. Some people are not even good at finishing courses. I know people who have bought Remit courses, haven't even started them, which is wild. I mean, I, if you have that money, and you can just blow it, I mean, I guess, but... Um, sometimes the money is a great accountability tool because if it's a significant amount, you have to finish it to make it worthwhile. So there's that other aspect. I think, as you can see with the case studies, this thing really works well for top performers or people who are ambitious enough to become top performers. Notice how a lot of the case studies, and they have, you know, he brought in a whole new cohort of uh, students, which is you know, just speaks to his expertise because he had a, a whole cohort here of different students and he went through and kind of um, did the same thing and uh, some of them saw some great results from it. And so in this this new one, he has a whole new cohort and he's coaching them through and these are high performers. So if you're one of those people who, you know, maybe you're that nonprofit director like in the second video I showed you of the student or you're a data analytics product manager like that first uh, lady that I showed you, both of them were clearly very ambitious, um, doing very well, but couldn't make it to that next level. And with the help of a video like a course like this, they could, like the students, iron out a lot of the lack of confidence they have, you know, cut out all the kind of rambling and boiled down like a succinct plan for negotiation and get that 30K, 40K, 50K, maybe even 100K salary raise. Rare, but not unheard of. Um, and you could make a huge return on investment on this. Now, for me specifically, um, when I use this course, um, I don't know if it was the cause of this course or something else, because you know there's a lot of variables at play. It was not a controlled experiment. Um, I was doing a lot of stuff, and ultimately, what happened was um, I did I networked with someone at the organization that hired me, but I don't think the person I networked with, to my knowledge, contributed to me being accepted in the role, because I still apply through the front door through their uh, website's job board twice. And then they, you know, someone else found me that way. Nonetheless, I got in and, you know, I completely revamped my resume and cover letter based on what he said. Um, it was completely different before and after. So maybe that played a role, maybe it didn't. Um, and so ultimately what ended up happening was, I, I think the biggest payoff was the negotiation part. When I got the offer, I, you know, I guarantee you if I didn't take this course, I would have just said yes. I would have taken the first offer. I guarantee you I would have, based on my stage in life then. Um, but instead, I paused. I did the methodology uh, said, 
And I tapped my network. I, I, I shopped around. I told them I would get back to them. And um, I got a higher offer. I would say it was like 10, 15% higher. Not significant, especially since the starting rate was uh, rather base and low. But still, still, that was something that could compound into a little bit more, a little bit more over the years. Um, so there is potential return on investment in this in different ways that you may not know. You know, I've also, through the uh, networking lesson, the, the module on that, um, I was able to, and I still reach out to people. I haven't done it in a while, so I've been trying to get back into it, which I, I did do. I started to reach out to some some fellow people. Um, build a few, you know, connections with people who served as kind of semi-mentors. And so that's, that's kind of helped me and... Uh, giving me tips over the years. So that's another thing that you never know what might turn into. Also notice how the modules are kind of slightly different. Some of them have stayed the same, you know. Uh, you still have the negotiation module. You still have the kind of uh, finding your role in company. But, uh, you know, some of them have been tweaked a little bit. So module, you know, one, two, three is kind of like company, find your company and your job. And then module four is network. But in the new version, it's find your role, find your company, uh, network, and then resume cover letter. So it's kind of like been like tweaked here and there. Um, this one goes into application after that, whereas this one says land multiple interviews, perfecting interview. It has two, splitting the interview into two, and then it goes into kind of some other stuff. Hidden perks, that was definitely not a module. It was like at most a bonus video in the original. So he's kind of branched that out into its own module, which is unique. And then, of course, because of COVID-19 and everything, he's brought in a new module with three videos and three uh, downloadable documents on kind of remote work and kind of how to negotiate for that and the difference between a virtual interview and a real one because that makes a huge difference too virtually it's it's a different ball game for a lot of reasons that he explains in the course first off you know he has this whole briefcase technique which is a little bit more impactful when it's in person because it's about you know taking a certain thing out of the briefcase laying it down and then following the script on and, and laying out what you you hand over to that person so very interesting. You might be wondering, well, what, what type of documents do you get? Well, it's usually like cheat sheets and stuff on like the top five objections you get when you ask for a raise and how to handle them. Um, in this one, it's, uh, are you ready for your virtual interview? So it's a little playbook or downloadable resource. You hit the button and it downloads on, uh, you know, I, get, I assume a checklist on a virtual interview. And I'm going to complete this whole course and uh, give you my thoughts then. Right now, it's kind of like a first look after completing about one and a half modules. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little like nice little checklist for people who like that stuff. Check your internet connection. Show up early, but not too early. Um, turn off notifications. Test sound. Check your background. Check your lighting. And you might be thinking, I, I think a lot of skeptics, um, a lot of people who have um, very negative views on any type of thing that they have to spend money on, uh, they always say like, oh, this is common sense. This is stuff that you can just figure out on your own. This is stuff you can find on YouTube for free. I think not. You know, I, I think I was a information junkie. I had watched thousands of YouTube videos. Uh, on self-development and stuff like this. And at that time, for whatever reason, the info and then the order that it was delivered was not readily available online. And so despite all that, like if it wasn't for this course, I would not have negotiated salary for starters. Um, and also you have so many conflicting ideas on what a good resume is. It's nice to just say, okay, I'm just going to go with this course and try that out. And he has a very kind of succinct story building resume uh, kind of framework here. Um, 
so I want to kind of just wrap this up and kind of give you a little peek into some final things and then just go and tell you to subscribe to my channel and leave a like. But um, here's the success fault. Uh, you get a bunch of specific uh, PDFs and examples, you know, an example cover letter from a six-figure earner who increased his salary by $60,000. I wonder if that's before or after. Um, I'm guessing after, you know, with these, you know, he, he has a lot of like engineers and like programmers and people who I don't know how they make that much money. But, um, you know, a lot of top performers in here, it, it, I guess it depends a lot on the industry. $80,000 raise. Now, keep in mind, these are like best case situations, depends on your industry and your job. But you'd be surprised. Um, maybe if you can't do an 80000 he'll tell you, well... Maybe you can ask for five. It's it's all about percentages and and ranges and what's realistic in your 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 range. And chances are, if you if you do the research, it's probably more than you expect. So in this case, you know, he goes through a little bit of uh, exercises and videos uh, or, or photos of um, what you can do here. Table of contents. Uh, so you know, he's going through the formula for one of his the negotiation technique. So that's the success fault. A lot of cool downloadables that you can get instantly rather than sifting through the modules. And then with the library section, um, basically it kind of, it seems to be, it kind of flips through and uh, kind of organizes the modules in a different way from what I can tell. Um, now, if you complete, the one thing I think could be a little bit better with the user interface is um, when you're watching the videos, you have to complete all the videos and then hit mark complete to mark them all complete. You can't like, as they do in YouTube or Netflix or masterclass.com, if you finish a video, it auto marks it complete. If you like get like to 95%, it's mark complete. Sometimes you just click off because you don't want to see the final five minutes of them talking and telling you to subscribe or whatever. Um, you have to wait until you finish all these videos and then hit the big button to complete the entire module. So that would be a nice user interface update for any UX engineers on Ramit's team who's watching this. Um, or if you, let's say you watch the video halfway and then your dog or your child interrupts you or your spouse and then you leave. Well, it doesn't just kind of come back to, and, and like highlight that you got halfway through and then just kind of resume there. You just kind of have to find your spot again. So a, a little thing that I think they could probably easily fix. Um, but overall, really liking this thing. I mean, in total, you it seems like a lot of videos, right? 7, 11, 16, 21, 25, 31, 37, 39, 42 videos. How do you even get through this? Honestly, for someone like me who just digests information like it's nothing, I'll do it. Easy. I could play it on the background. I can just listen at one and a half time speed. I'll absorb it. I may even watch it twice to really get it in. I really care about this because it's your career. Like you can really revolutionize your life, your job, everything from this. For the average person, you don't have to watch everything. Click into it. Like my, my tip is like, if that's what you're concerned about, if that's what intimidates you, click into it, look at the titles and see what applies to you. I, I would, if you're brand, brand new, maybe at least watch like the first three chronologically, because that's probably the most impactful. But like, you know, after the first two or three from each module, like look around, like, does this situation apply to me? If not, skip it. You know, this one's like, I don't know what I'm passionate about. If you already know what you're passionate about, like you know hockey and esports is the industries you want to get into, skip the skip the video. That's fine. What if I'm not qualified or something like that? Well, if that's not a concern for you, skip the video. If it is, watch it. Um, play it at two times speed if you have to. I, I would recommend not two times because sometimes it's too fast and you miss something, but that'll, that'll be up to you. Um, I do have, you know, some things that could be better that I, I got from the first iteration of the course that I I don't know if it will be fixed based on what I've seen so far, but it's something that I am looking forward to see if they fix or they won't. 
um, these are like integral kind of procedural like uh, things that I, I feel like were gaps in kind of really getting there. And um, while the general outlay of the process is pretty good, there's there's like a few things that I feel like could be maybe missing holes. So, you know, the general formula has, has you kind of find your company, then uh, network, and then, you know, pass your resume cover letter, and then do the interviews. And there's like a certain methodology for how you talk to people, how you present your materials and stuff like that. But, you know, what if you just really don't know what's out there and you don't know who to ask? Like, let's say, you know, he does have a kind of shopping process here, but what if you don't completely follow that? Like, let's say you don't even know what you don't know. What about the industries that haven't even been invented or were invented recently, like esports or, or Hollywood's like a whole another ball game, right? Like, let's say you want to be an actor. Like, um, it's it's definitely more focused on the kind of Silicon Valley type, New York City consultant, engineer, nonprofit director type. And it works really well for them. But what about the more artist creator types? That's a different thing. It, it claims to kind of give you your dream job. But what if your dream job's to be a YouTuber and make your money vlogging or or giving away a million dollars every video like Mr. Beast does? Well, a little bit outside of the framework. But, you know, the whole broad promise is you can find your dream job with this. So that's that's one thing. And then, you know... Um, the formula, at least in the original one, is it's basically like iterative. So if you go through this process and let's say you don't figure out, uh, you don't find anything or you can't find any interviews or you get declined by the offer or you figure out that, you know, this job's not for me. You know, this industry is not for me. It's You, you go back and you start over and you repeat the process a few times through. Um you know, what happens if you keep doing that and you're just not getting those interviews? You're not getting those people saying yes. Well, you know, he he tells you to keep tweaking the script and stuff like that. But, you know, it can get, a, from experience, it can get somewhat disheartening after a while when you're, you're cranking away and it's not really tangibly getting through. And maybe the biggest, biggest issue, and I mean, I guess he addresses this in this like short, what if I'm not qualified thing. Um is what if you don't, you know, you, you see your dream job, but you're just never going to be competent enough for it, you know? What if you want to be the CEO of Fortune 500 or you want to be the director of an esports company or marketing for the New York Jets or uh, something big, a Hollywood director, a, a big-time actor, and you just know, I'm just not that good. Maybe you want to be just like a king of search engine optimization, but from your feedback from your peers and your own experience at that job, you keep being told, dude, you're just not that good of a programmer. You're not good at SEO. You're just you're just going to be average for the rest of your life. And some people are like that. You know, they don't have the talents to excel on. So I think his, his big thing here is... Um, you know, if you don't have the qualifications, find out what you need to be qualified for that and attain it. Even if that means taking a stepping stone or finding a a interim job that's kind of a stepping stone to that ladder. Uh, the issue with that is, uh, well, what about um, if those don't work? Because you're just not talented you're just not good good enough and that's true you know some people are just not good programmers even if they really want to be a good programmer so unfortunately i don't think that's something he addresses head on but it's kind of intuitively implied unfortunately that like i mean maybe you just draw from your common sense you kind of have to give up on that profession then like you just you're going to settle for average salary and average range and and just go with it um so I'm going to follow up by just kind of watching that video. What if I'm not qualified? One minute and 29 seconds. And then we'll call it a day. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know if you have any questions. Please, positive comments. Try and be constructive, not critical in the comments section. Real talk, maybe you shouldn't apply for the job. If you are truly not qualified for it, if you are a gardener and you're applying for a cardiologist job, don't do that. 
If you make 70k and you're applying for a 250,000 oh, dollar job, have it's very options. unlikely you're going to get it. So the real talk is maybe you actually shouldn't apply. But a huge amount of people make a mistake of holding themselves back by looking at a job description and saying, oh wow, they have nine requirements. I have seven of them. Oh, I don't have those last two. I'm not going to apply. Guys, that is counting yourself out. Don't so I like this. I got to pause it right there. First off, he's actually addressing something that really wasn't addressed directly in the first version, as I mentioned, which is, you know, some people are just not that competent, you know, and it, it kind of speaks to maybe this course isn't for everyone. You know, there's going to be people who are just kind of average in life or, you know, not killing it. They're not the top 1% of programmers in the world. And, you know, I, I think I fall kind of in the middle. I, I think I'm above average, but I'm not like top 1% most precise pristine athlete so so it, it does make me wonder like how much can i really get out of this course if i'm at that kind of range um and then you know he, he kind of addresses okay that's one category of people but what about the people who are just unnecessarily insecure you know you have seven out of the nine qualifications and because of that you just shoot yourself in the foot you you just give up when in reality you have enough qualifications and you can easily with some work and time and perseverance, jumped, jumped to that next level, maybe even hitting all nine of them. Um, so interesting. Don't reject yourself. Let the company do that if you are within the bounds of possibility. Top talent knows that they can learn on the job, that if they can do most of the things in the job requirement, they trust themselves enough to know they can pick up a couple of those things on the job. So be realistic. There are certain jobs that are simply not applicable to you, at least right now. But then there are lots of jobs where your natural tendency will be to count yourself out. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to think like top talent. Say, you know what? I'm smart enough to figure out these last two things on the job. I'm going to apply. I'm going to have a conversation and an interview. And then we can both decide if I'm a good fit for this position. That is how you do it. So really cool here. Um, I just want to wrap it up with a final conclusion. And by the way, I like how he's in this one just kind of doing a kind of bonus casual video from what seems to be the rooftop of his apartment with his ear pods on. Uh, it just goes to show you that, you know, a multi-million dollar course uh, like this one, uh, who knows how much money he's made from this, uh, from what I've heard, millions, um, doesn't have to be like all bells and whistles all the time. It's simply about how much value the students get out of it. Not always about how fancy it is. Um, anyhow, um, in conclusion, my first look at this course is uplifting, generally positive, and I'm excited to see what else it will offer. I think he's definitely starting to address little bits of stuff that weren't addressed in his first one. He started to make tweaks as he should. Maybe it was a little overdue for that, but I'm really dig digging this and diving into it. I am overdue to really revamp a lot of these skills that I've learned from this course and kind of practice. Um, I think I'm positive about this. And as I mentioned, is this a course for anyone? No, I mean, it depends on your budget. This is an expensive premium course. It's not something that anyone can afford. But for certain people, especially the tens, hundreds of thousands of uh, directors or managers on LinkedIn, I mean, there's plenty of top performers who have yet to find Ramit Sethi. And this course could net them a lot of money just through the negotiation modules alone. I mean mostly through that. Um, but it could also help you find or pivot in your career. Maybe you're you kind of pigeonholed in this idea that this is what I can do for the rest of my life because of my degree in college. And he really breaks that box open with his whole uh, networking and job search process where through that you can figure out all these different industries and job titles you've never even heard of through LinkedIn and other sources, and then uh, network properly, do the right pitches, and he'll provide those pitches, and learn from these people to figure out how they got the job, how they, they grew into their job, and uh, progressed and grew, so that maybe even you can, you know, sneak in. So that's something that's that's definitely still, it's, it's I'm still, I feel like I'm green and new in that area. Like, I haven't really leaned into that. Like, I, I, I'm very curious about that because what if I decided to make a complete 180 pivot and all of a sudden, I don't know, I'm a talk show host. Who knows? But um, yeah, I think overall uplifting stuff. Hit that subscribe button if you like the video. Leave a like. And um, yeah, I think in terms of professional development, definitely worth it, especially for some people. Um, 
Thanks for watching. See you later. Hit that subscribe button. I got a podcast below if you want to watch that. Listen to that. I got other videos on cool topics. Um, I have bunches of playlists on YouTube. Tons of other content for you. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see in your next video. Thanks.